Hey YouTube, Hill Country Husker. Appreciate you guys checking out my videos. Thanks for all of my subscribers. Appreciate the comments. Keep them coming. How many folks think we can continue to spend our way out of this financial crisis that not only the United States but the world has found itself in? How many think that we can spend our way out of this? I'm with you. I don't think we can either. This problem has gotten so severe, uh, and it's a problem that, that's not created by the current uh, Obama administration. This problem goes back further than, you can't blame Bush, don't want to hear none of that. It's not Clinton's fault, although he was part of it, he contributed to it. Uh, it was not the first George Bush under his administration. No, this goes back, oh, I'm, I'm going to say all the way back to Kennedy and before, um, maybe even back as far as uh, Woodrow Wilson. Okay, This whole thing got rolling. Uh, FDR had a big play in it. Anyway, we've come to this point. And... I don't know if you've noticed or not, but it, you know, it used to just be the uh, conspiracy theorist and the folks wearing the tinfoil hats and uh, the doom and gloomers that were out there saying, uh, you know, impending financial collapse is coming. It's coming. If you look now, there are many, many uh, economists and and uh, people, writers, uh, uh, business leaders. Uh, you can go on sites such as Forbes, uh, Bankrate. Uh, Fox News even has a segment called "Who's Ruining the Economy." Uh, a lot of authors, a lot of a lot of business people and economists are are coming out and saying. You know what? It's coming. Uh, the 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 you can't continue like this. The economic collapse is coming. So it's it's a real deal, and it, and it's unfortunate that I don't I don't see a lot of people really taking this seriously the way they should. Uh, what can you do? Can you keep raising taxes? Uh, can you start doing like they're doing over in the European Union and start looking at a lot of austerity measures? Um, I think that might be a start, but they've, they've dug, you know, EU's dug themselves into such a deep hole. It's just a vicious cycle is what they're doing. Uh, over here, you know, we've increased taxes, uh, but we've also increased entitlement. So that's not the answer. What can you and I do? What's the, uh, what's our hedge against this collapse that's coming? And don't get me wrong, guys. I'm not a, a, a business, you know, I'm not an economist. I don't run my own business. I don't have an MBA. Uh, I read a lot. I watch a lot of stuff on uh, different financial networks. I listen to a lot of different... Uh, different outlets that convey information um, and I do read a lot of the uh, a lot of these economists that are talking about the economy and, and, and what our future might hold so anyway I say that so that when you hear me this is my opinion only okay this is stuff that I've picked up <clears throat> what can we do uh, I believe one of the main things that we can do the main thing uh, ahead of this collapse is uh, get ourselves out of debt. Uh, do everything you can. Uh, keep your credit cards paid down if you have credit cards. Uh, don't rack up a big uh, credit card debt. Keep it paid in full every month. Yes, it is possible. Trust me. I've been doing it for about 20 years. I have credit cards. I use them. When my bill comes in, I pay them. I don't buy something that I can't afford or that I can't pay off. Okay, it's real simple. Okay, if you can pay your mortgage, do it. Do it as soon as you can. 
An easy way to do this is double up on your principal. Uh, you can take a 30-year mortgage and have it done in 15. Okay, uh, it's that's that is a little bit more difficult because we are talking a large amount of money. But uh, whatever it is, get yourself out of debt. If you have student loans, why pay those off? Okay, all right. What else can we do? What can we do on a more personal level? Um, it's a good bet that the dollar is going to lose its place as the fiat currency of the world. So what I suggest you do is start converting, uh, uh, go down to your local coin shop and start buying either uh, pre-65 quarters and half dollars and dimes, uh, get some uh, what they call junk silver, uh, save up your, uh, your greenbacks and buy gold, buy, buy gold coins. Uh, they will hold their value and in the time of financial crisis they will still have value. If you're able, buy property. Buy property and hold it. Okay, That's another, another thing that you can do uh, to be pre prepared for uh, a crisis. And I would think if you're able, again uh, a lot of this depends upon your situation, um, I still believe stocks can be a good investment. Um, am I talking about investing in Apple or Dell or HP or General Motors? No, that's not what I'm talking about. I would, I would invest in things that consumables, uh, not discretionary items, but consumables. Uh, Kimberly Clark that makes toilet paper. Uh, you might want to look into investing in Ruger or Smith & Wesson. Uh, invest in, in items, in companies that produce items that people will use, people will continue to use, people will continue to buy, regardless of the situation. Uh, people are still going to be buying food, they're still going to be going to the grocery store. So be smart about it. Now, I'm, I'm not a stock advisor, and I'm, and I'm not endorsing Kimberly Clark or any of these other companies that I had mentioned, but I'm just saying, if you can, um, I think that those companies will continue to, to produce their goods. Um, another thing, while you still can, before, while the dollar still has some value, is uh, buy items that people want. Um, buy things that you need. Double up on 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 your groceries and, and look to buy long-term food items. Uh, look to buy tools and equipment and things that you can trade. Things that you can, uh, you know, whether it be a socket set or a bunch of hammers or maybe some shovels. Things that in a time of crisis you've got them, somebody needs them, you can say, hey, let's work a trade. That's, that's a real easy thing that you can do. You know, and something else, kind of talking back about investing, how about investing in people? And by that I mean, um, if you know somebody that's, that's wanting to go to medical school, or wants to become a nurse, or say you know a guy, a young man that wants to uh, 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 become a mechanic, learn how to work on vehicles, or, or whatever, um, Invest in them. Help them out. But do so with an understanding and with an agreement that I'm helping you out now. And when you get your, your RN's license or when you become a master mechanic, that you'll remember and we'll have an agreement. And if I need to get my car some work done, you'll remember that I was there and I helped you out. Not looking for anything free, but just remember, I'm gonna I'm gonna loan you X amount of dollars to help you get your education, and in return, you're gonna come back and help me out when I have a need. Um, just something I thought about there. Uh, invest in people, invest in people's futures, and invest in skills, and invest in your skills as well. Take the time now while you can, and and learn some new skills. Keep your skills sharp. Like I said, we can't continue down this, this path of reckless federal spending. 
uh, and not expect something bad to come about it. Um, and it's really scary when when the smart smarter people than me are agreeing and they're and and they're saying, "Hey guys, you need to get ready. You, here's here's some here's some things that you can do." Um, I'm taking their advice. I think it's a good thing. Uh, hope you'll take mine. Just my thoughts, whole country Husker. Thanks.